thank you, thank you, thank you, Carmen, for putting all this together, putting our two groups together. Um, there was a lot of back office discussion about how we were going to do this, and I'm sorry that I was late. Um, <laughs> Cynthia, nice to meet you. Andrea, nice to meet hey, you, too. Hey. Um, Rick, as always, it's good to be here. I'm sure we got a bunch of things to talk about. Um, I don't know how, what are going to be the parameters and everything else like that. Usually on Thursday nights, um, right after All About the Joy, we usually do Late Night Parents, where we talk a little bit of technology, a little bit of education, a little bit of parenting, and a lot about sports. And we talk about some new, 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 new products and, and uh, other things that we kind of run across. News, current events. Current yeah. events, social issues, and everything like that. Quite a few opinions. Yeah, quite a few opinions. So we usually do that, and we usually piggyback off of you guys sometimes because you guys have some great topics. So we thought it was it would be beneficial to work with you guys to see if we could you know, do something like this maybe once a quarter. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, what? You heard that too, right? Um, <laughs> you heard that too. That is a great, this, that is a great idea. Oh, you you know, this, this is some of my hard negotiating uh, <laughs> that you see me hard at work usually. If you see me during my daytime job, I'm like, eh, let me just throw this one in. Um, since everyone does most of their own live streams or pods, maybe um, let's say Cynthia and I can talk about a specific topic on late night parents. Andrea, who who's a mom, we can talk about things like that. Um, Tony does certain things. I'm sure you guys would love to listen to Mr. B's podcast and live streams on um, MMA, mixed martial arts and stuff like that. People, no, don't I like, people don't like violence. That's no, what Ryan like talks violence. about no. everything, cooking and gaming <laughs> and everything else. Like that. <laughs> Rich, for those of you that are spiritual and um, you know love the Lord, he gives you he gives you that flavor. And yep. we would just like to learn about um, the different expertise that Cynthia and and Andrea, with, with you guys, Andrea. Yes, Rayo. It's Andrea. Oh, it's Andrea, not Andrea. No, Andrea. 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 It's Andrea. Really hard, but you're going to get it right. <laughs> Andrea. Okay, so Andrea, <laughs> I know we are. we've done some research on you, so we know you do all different types yeah. of consulting and leadership and and stuff like that. So we would love to hear from you. What do you want to hear? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you guys think I'm bad. Ooh, you have some of the it. stuff that you do, you know, some of the um, you know, the mentoring, the coaching and stuff that you do. My work? <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> work? Great. <laughs> yeah, isn't it? It's like quitting time. I'm not supposed to talk about work now. It's Friday night. We will love talking about work right after work. Hey Alma, hey, how Alma. you doing? Absolutely. Uh well, yeah. So I guess you like I, your elevator speech. The elevator speeches, I work with uh, organizations on leadership development and strategic and succession planning, do a lot of executive coaching, and just ideally help people cultivate better workplaces okay. where people actually like being at work or don't hate it. <laughs> Got it. And Cynthia, if you could bring this up to speed for Brian, myself. Maybe Tony knows, but I don't know if Jojo knows what you what about you do. what I do. Yeah. Um, I'm a medical administrator, just graduated college for anthropology and hoping to get my master's nice. in forensic anthropology. Hey. Hey. Thank you. Really cool. <laughs> so um, good stuff, good stuff. That is good stuff. Carmen helped me out a lot this week. I was able to pick our brains on a few things, a few topics and things like that. Not related to the show, but or business. To and I did it for free. She did it for free. <laughs> How do you like that? She did it for free. I, I, I'm sure 
she would have charged a grip for it. No, I wouldn't have. So yes, Carmen helped me out greatly this week on a few things that I need to hopefully address. And it was, I tell you, discussions like that are usually great because when you're surrounded by yes people and you're surrounded, and, and I guess it's some similar work that, that you know people would do when you're looking to, how do you increase, or you just need to hear some straight talk sometimes from people. And we all know how shy I am, and I would never really do that. <laughs> so hard to get straight talk from Carmen. But yeah, Carmen's always beating around the bush. She never tells you what's really on. She never really tells you, you know. And I'm walking to the subway. I'm walking to the subway, and she's giving me the straight talk, and I'm like, okay. And she said, maybe you don't want to hear this, Ted, but I'm going to tell you anyway. And I was just like, okay. But it was good. It was good. No, it was really helpful. We well, need uh, to tell them what I said. You can't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just left it all out. Like, like what is that? <laughs> well, you, you got to tease a few things. You got to tease a oh, few right. things. You know, you know. And we'll get to that. We'll get to that point. You know, we'll get to that. But um, I guess first, Carmen, we were talking about topics to discuss amongst our group that made sense, and I guess we could lead off with. Relationships? Jada and Will? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Will and Jada or Jada and Will or wow. I'm just kidding. Uh-uh. Um, I'm just wondering where Tony is. I don't know why that's bothering me He's so much. Still there. I had to get yeah. a load out of the dryer. My work clothes are expensive. I apologize. Okay, that's oh, all right. Yeah. Okay. He's there. He's there. Oh, yeah. What did so, you say? I know Alma. I don't know. Ted is 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 uh teasing it. It's his show. I'm Al- to Alma, you gotta hang on. Maybe in the the C block, we'll we'll get into <laughs> how she was beating me up the entire way, you know. But it was um, constructive. It was constructive. I did not beat you up. I you asked me a question, and I you answered it in the flavor truly. that is Carmen. Yeah, I, you which is very it. honest and very strong. <laughs> and what? And but okay. But here's the thing. Why are you gonna ask me a question? Y- y'all know me pretty well. Even Mister B, who probably knows me the least here, would know if he asked me a question, he's gonna get a straight up answer. Right. right? Probably That's right. True. Yeah. That's true. I'm yeah. Saying, like. I said it nicely and kindly, but I told you the truth. You did. You did. And we'll get to that. Okay. So we were talking about um, relationships. And well, last night, we I was watching you guys. Just, just to let you know, there was no stream last night because I had some dental work done yesterday. Oh, okay. Um, so by the time I woke up, it was like 10 minutes after 9. So I just watched you guys. But you guys last night were talking about Will and Jada and your thoughts on the promotion, the book, um, things that you should say in the public, things that you shouldn't, things, you know. Well, well, it was kind of a jumping off point. It wasn't really about Will and Jada, although Mario had some thoughts about Will and Jada. But it was really about, like, how much information is too much information? Like, how much are you willing to share with each other at work, right? right? So one of the big issues I'm having at work right now and anybody who knows me, when you text me during the day or whatever, you know I'm in the middle of talking to a team of people. And the big conversation I've had in two different places, Where telling people I'm not your friend. I've had to say that multiple times in the past few months to different teams. I'm not your friend. I'm not your therapist. I need you to do your work. You know, because some people will just want to share way too much information and give too much like just a lot of excuses that are very personal for why something is done, which, yeah. you know, we're all happy and want to be as supportive as possible for whatever's going on in your life. But at the end of the day, I don't care. You know what I mean? Like I need the work done. And so yeah. it was kind of that, it was kind of a jumping off point. Alma said, I respect that I subscribe to the same philosophy. If you want the truth, ask me. If you want someone to be nice, you're not going to get that over here. <laughs> We're the same. So, yeah, so that's kind of what we were talking about when it comes to relationships, but we can dwell into whatever you want. Well, I guess, do you do you guys actually really still do want to talk Will and Jada? Or just, is that kind of beat to death? I think it's beat to death. I think it's beat to death. Yeah. I don't think a lot of their personal business should be out there as much as it is. 
And I'll be honest, those memes are brutal. Y'all ain't right on social media. I'm gonna tell all of y'all. Right now. Y'all are wrong. <laughs> funny. Wrong, they are right. funny. Oh, damn. No, some of those memes are funny. If they are funny. Listen, they were friends. They were homies. I'm gonna need a bunch of y'all to stop back like men and women can't be friends without trying to get with each other because y'all front. What? Lying. Yes, what? there's a lot of female friends I have that ain't. We ain't never get together. We just yeah, talk. man. What's up? What's yeah, up man. with that? What's up with that? Yeah, y'all both wrong. When I saw that woman, they was in the car with sugar. Too bad. I said I'm through with y'all on social media. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I, I, I missed something there. Clearly, I missed something. It's, I don't know what we're talking about. And they're just going hard on Jada. They're going real hard. Again. Yeah. But he's tearing up. Talking about that. Um, Jada, Jada was Tupac the whole time. <laughs> something oh, like that. that. <laughs> okay, that's just wrong. That's just wrong. Hey, Fireman Rich. I can't what Fireman Rich, what's going on? Hey, man? what's up, Rich? Fireman Rich, how you doing? It's good. It's good. I see you down there, too. But no, nah, I mean, I'm over. Y'all can discuss it. Yeah. I don't have much... Because I think they've gone through enough. Kanye and Kim, they're going through enough. I just saw a story on him and what's going on with his situation. I, I don't know. I, to me, and I'll say this about relationships, the biggest problem I'm seeing with relationships right now is they are advertising broken homes. Yeah. I said this on Twitter a while ago. They advertise a marriage. They advertise having kids. Then they advertise a problem. Then they advertise divorce. Then they advertise somebody else taking care of the kids. And somebody else got somebody else that can't see the kids enough. That is entirely too much on social media. And I also blame a lot of television because they're pushing it. 80s TV yeah. shows, families that were steady and comfortable. They didn't go through that. You mm-hmm. hate divorce. Now you want to see a divorce because you want to see how everybody survives afterwards. Yeah. That's exactly what they're advertising. But, but Tone, I got to challenge that because 50% of marriages end in divorce. I, it used to be 75, I remember. Okay, well, wait, are you talking about like 19- the overall number or African-American households? Overall. Okay. Overall, okay. it was 75% of marriages ended in divorce. So there was almost no incentive to get married. So how do you even keep a family together if you're pushing that narrative? We got to push it back to people staying together and working through issues instead of just being one and done and not having nothing and struggling just to maintain what you built in the first place. Right. Wait, are you advocating staying in a marriage even if the relationship is over because of the children? I'm advocating, I'm advocating for marriage. Be careful. That, that's in mind, Tony. Be careful. Uh, I, 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 I will do this. I will advertise marriage. I am fighting with you. I'm asking a question. I know. I, know. I, I will advocate for marriage. I will advocate for people. So can I ask a question? What do you consider to be a great marriage? Something that should be saved? You got to fight through everything. You have to. And it's really going to have to start with you. Both sides. Male, female, husband, wife. Husband, husband, wife, wife. All of y'all. You got to Tony. What about Tony? What about infidelity? That's where, How do you get that's where it gets that? tricky to me. That is where it gets tricky to me. And I will finances, I will this finances and infidelity. How, How do you get around those two things? Finances become an issue when you don't have it established in the first place. I'm not going to talk against people who lost their jobs. I'm not. You don't anticipate that. But if you came in with a bad financial situation and you don't work to improve it, either side, not just one, that's a problem. I can't answer. I'll be honest about that. But people got to learn how to, when you get married, you got to know what you're getting yourself into. Okay. I'm going to say yeah. something because I'm a little frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused here. But Tony, you're married. You're you're in the middle of a divorce, right? Or you've already been divorced. Our divorce was finalized in December. Okay. So my question is, you're saying all this, but, and this is not to get too personal, but then why didn't you fight for your marriage or why didn't did. you stay together? I did. She didn't okay. But so you still ended in divorce. That wasn't necessarily my fault. So why would you want to stay with somebody who doesn't want to stay with you is my question. That's the hard question. Why would you want to? Depends on what the situations are of the, are of the divorce. Mm-hmm. Depends on why you even got to that point. Sometimes it's infidelity. Sometimes it's finances. Sometimes they're just tired of each other. Sometimes some people just get married to get what they want for the moment. You got a lot of variables when it comes to divorce these days. Yeah. It's not just about infidelity. Hey, Rick, can you put that, that message yeah. on screen, the last one from Fireman Rich? Married 37 years. Married 37 years. Yep. To the missus. Congratulations to, to the missus. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, I mean, overall, overall though, you gotta have a healthy balance. It, it, that that's a, that's the one thing. It has to be a healthy balance, not a what have you done for me lately. It's not like mm-hmm. a business transaction. The last two years from 2020 to 2022, when I was with the when I was a, uh, a coordinator for a moving company, I have moved a lot of people that ended up in divorce where the guy had to take an early retirement and a pay cut. 
but they had to downsize their lavish seven bedroom house to a four bedroom house. And the wife was like, no, I can't do this no more. I'm out. I felt bad for the dude. A lot of them were cooped up together. They just got to the point where they couldn't stand each other. That ended up into a breakup or divorce, but it's just like, there's no, there's no balance. Honestly, it's either it's, there's no give and take. There's no, I mean, there's no trust. There's no respect. There's no balance. There's, uh, I mean, and even witnessing it with, uh, with my, with my, my friends in my inner circle with their relationships. I mean, like, if you take a, if you get married, there's a vow. It's a vow for a reason. That's why they have that for richer, for poor, for sick, or for health. I'm a ride or die. And if you ain't gonna be a ride or die with me, then I ain't got. Then bye, kick rocks, go. I, I mean, because I, 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 I'm at the point in my life I don't need any more headaches. I got enough dealing with my headaches already. I don't need any more. Yeah, Ella Brian. If you nice. don't cook, if you don't cook and you like cleaning, great. I like cooking. Or if it's vice versa, it don't matter. There's got to be a healthy balance. Got to be a balance. I agree with the balance. Yeah. And how long have you been married, Brian? I've never been married. Thank you. <laughs> wow. See what you do. And <laughs> wow. Hey, hey, listen, listen. Uh-huh. I have been divorced, and even I'm shutting my mouth. Right? So <laughs> no, no, no. But you shouldn't have to. No, 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 no. Here's my point. I'm okay with people getting divorced. And here's why. I think we have a really weird idea that we have to stay with one person, the perfect person forever. And everything that we're talking about is this weird idea that if that if it doesn't work, that somehow you failed at something. I know divorce is hard. I get it. And I don't have children. And my divorce was amicable. Everybody here knows that I am the godmother to the child of my ex-husband. Okay. So clearly I have a very amicable, very friendly relationship. And I think what bothers me is the animosity that happens with people Mm -hmm. when you do look at for everyone who's been married, me like Alma, I know you and Mario been married and I get it. I love all the people who've been married for all the umpteen years. Bravo to you. But that doesn't mean that other relationships didn't work out. Okay. Just because people got divorced. And I think we have to change our mindset. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be so angry about it. Sometimes relationships change and end. And if you loved someone to begin with, then you can love them, even if you don't like them anymore, for whatever choices they had to make and move on. And understand that your anger is all about you. But also, yeah, you but also, too, but also too, but with relationships and marriage, it's like a plant. You got to give time to grow. It takes work. You can't, you can't, you can't just one Sometimes little. Sometimes it's like a plant. A plant can die. That's right. <laughs> because you don't. Take I mean, care as of much it. as you care for it, because as much don't. as. You yeah. give it water, you give it food, <laughs> yeah. the plant gives you oxygen, it, it takes, can still it die. Takes work. <laughs> it takes work and everybody's too damn There's lazy to put in the work. Cycle. Listen, like, I've been with my husband for 25 years and we so have So what if I leave the toilet seat up? Put the damn thing down. You don't have to break up with me for that stupid shit. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to let Cynthia and Andrea talk. I'm going to shut up we, right now. We, we're Listen, triggered, I've been with my husband early. 25 years we've been together. We definitely have had ups and downs. Yeah. He's disabled now. He can't work. So I'm the sole breadwinner. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But we work at our relationship and it's not perfect. There is no relationship that is perfect. Correct. And, you know, and if down the line we decide we want to get a divorce, then so be it. Then we're happy for each other to be happy with someone else. I got to text Juan yeah. what you're saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Rick. If you love each other, you will love each other through whatever iteration yeah. your relationship is, even if that's separate. You don't yeah. have like, what I'm for is people being content and fulfilled, and that can happen yeah. in a marriage, it can happen outside a marriage, it can happen for a period of time in a marriage, and then you grow in a different direction, and that's okay. But yeah. I just don't, there's no, to me, it's just a archaic kind of institute. And I'm married. My anniversary is tomorrow. So, I mean, it's Happy just, it's a Happy archaic institution that people don't really need. I, the I really growing need. in different directions, I'm seeing a lot more of. That's what's concerning me with today's society. There's a lot of people growing in different well, directions. A lot of people choose not to grow. That's the issue. People right. make the decision not to grow 
Right. And if one person is making the decision not to grow and the other person is making the decision to grow, what are you going to do? That is right. a question. Yeah. Yeah, Rick, can you put that there. message up there from Alaz Dawson? That's Alma. That's Mario's wife. Oh, okay. Alma. So Alus I've been there for 25 light. years. Alus is her name. Like, but it's Alma. Oh, Alus. Alma. Alus Dawson. I've been married for 25 years together, 28, and it is work. It is a choice to love, honor, and obey. Key word. Every day. But from the beginning, we establish boundaries and deal breakers. Those things. Plain and simple. And I promise you, when Alma says obey, she don't mean she just obey her husband. She means the other way around. I'm just going to give you guys that later. <laughs> If there's any confusion. Okay. Okay. But also, also, to, also to Theodore Roosevelt said it best. He said comparison is the biggest thief uh, is the biggest thief of joy. So when you're on when you're on social media and you're like, oh look, they're in the Bahamas and we're in Florida. Oh look, they're in Canada, we're in Birmingham, Alabama. You're always comparing, and then by the time you know, you're like, why can't my dude be like that dude? Why can't my chick be like that chick? It's always comparing, <laughs> and that what that is what really destroys a relationship. You're comparing to other. It's not a competition. It's not a competition. Social media is just a facade. People put up what they want to to make Terrible. it look like their relationships and yeah. their lives are perfect, and then still, other people are getting jealous still, for something I mean, that isn't mine, even real. Agreed. Yeah, but the media, media, people, yeah, but ever. people want to emulate it. You know what I mean? Is those people that haven't and they, grown, and then they make it they they make it like a trend, which which is horrible to hear to say, you know what I mean? It's terrible. Like think about it, it's turning marriage into a trend where everybody's like, "Yo, let's get married because they're married and they're married. Let's get married." And now it's like, "Well, here we are." Oh, I hate your guts. I hate your guts too. <laughs> so, you know, some some people are more happy just being together than being married. And marriage doesn't work for everybody. But when, when fools rush like in. you guys say, you know, you want the best for your significant other. And whether you're together or not, you separate, you separate. You just want the best. That's it. You don't got to have animosity towards people or anything. Just go about your way, man, and just say, hey, it is what it is. I think that's what makes me sad about most of the marriages that I see that break up. And again, I know that my situation is an extreme, but it shouldn't be. You know, like if you loved someone enough to do that, to make that commitment, it makes me sad how much people loathe and hate and have such resentment towards the person that they had children with that they oh, yeah. thought they were going to spend the rest of their lives with. And it's kind of like, can you, can you find a way to forgive either yourself and that other person, you know? And I just want to tell uh, just a couple people in the uh, chat room. I don't want to leave them hanging. Mario, I'm not going after you, baby. Uh, Melanie just said, you can grow as individuals, keep communication open and stay together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know why yes. Fireman Rich is bringing in Go Texas Rangers. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Fireman Rich is no longer my friend. I'm going to un- follow you or whatever. Um, and Latoya, um, unconditional love on both parts is necessary. Ooh, that's a good one. One might grow yeah, quicker, but then that's a moment to carry the other person. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, toxic, fine. But, then that's but also to, Great point. But also, but also to a foundation and boundaries were not set in place to begin with. Because if you set up a foundation, you set up boundaries, you will have a good relationship. From my observation from everybody else I know and everybody else that I've spoken to that have been married for X amount of years. My, my like my failed relationships has been financial because like it's my choosing of the type of jobs I wanted to go. But I do the best of my ability, you know, the <laughs> shit. I mean, but the thing about it is it's like, hey, you love you, know, Rich. Right. <laughs> but hey, I mean, you, you want to go, you want to go for somebody else, you know, that that wants to flaunt and all that stuff, fine, go ahead, be that way. But it's just like, hey, you know, that's like, what you call I a gold digger if they're only going after you for your money. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, but 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 also too, but it, like what annoys me from my past experience is just that like I'd be there for him. I'd be like, yeah, what do you need? I got you. What you need help with that? I got you. But the moment I run into a snag, oh bye, I gotta go. Oh, it's not, not right you, it's me kind of for thing. you that's, then. Yeah, it's not the right yeah, person. Man, you can't do it, right? right. I know, but like I said, it's been like financial because it's like I run into a snag, but yet everything else I've done, 
I help them out. So try not help to help them stuff. out so much. Yeah. Don't do what you yeah, can. Like, yeah. Don't overexert yourself trying to give them everything when they can't do the same to you. Yep. Yeah. But I expect that reciprocated. Like I was there for you in your time of need. Be See, you needed me. to be on our last podcast with the love language. <laughs> because your love language is not the same as the girls you've been finding because <laughs> i mean like i could fix shit i could cook shit <laughs> i mean i could do it <laughs> yeah. yeah brian i y- you should talk to cynthia later she can get by you was giving me what my no love disrespect, brian not, you know I'm i just mentioned no disrespect i'm not hard to find it's all hey, it's all good i'm not hard to yeah. find <laughs> Brian, I think you're just choosing yeah. the wrong people or you're not choosing, but you're connecting and maybe falling for people and maybe you don't see the signs because no, look at as much as I make fun of you and whatever we, we go back and forth. I know you a good man and I know you can cook some shit. Okay. That I go give you some credit right there. I've seen you with the barbecue. <laughs> okay. Like I would go to Texas just for that. Okay. So you're a good person. You work hard. You need to find a person that connects on your level. You're not yeah. finding those right people. Yeah. That's yeah. what that's about. But it's also, important but also, to but know too, what you Yeah. But also I to wear my heart on my sleeve. What you want from, you know, what you want in a relationship, what your own values are so that you can kind of screen people for those values. Doesn't mean they have to totally match up, but they can't be like in total conflict either. And one thing I'll say too is if you don't want me then I don't want you because <laughs> why would I want you if you don't want me? <laughs> Sounds simple, but it's like, yep. that's the bottom line. Yeah. If yeah you don't I don't want, want that headache. Anymore, if someone doesn't want to abuse you, you, they're not the right person. Boom. Done. There you go. Right. Problem solved. Um, <laughs> something that you guys had mentioned a, a couple of weeks ago, and I, I responded to you, but it was at the end of your stream. Does your significant other need to be your best friend? Uh-oh. I say no. Which is they amazing. need to be but it probably would help the relationship a little if they are okay. one of your best friends. So I say no, but a comment that was used earlier, I think that person, that significant other needs to be your ride or die. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they don't have to be your best friend. Can you tell me what ride or die is versus best friend? What does that mean? What's the difference or what does it mean? Cause I don't know what that means. Um, you know, your significant other is your ride or die, meaning you can depend on them when needed, just as they would depend on you. But isn't versus... that the same as a best friend? A best friend, you would depend on them regardless of whatever. And they yeah. would be there has for an you. expiration date. They're close. They're close. Well, so does the partner. They're, 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 they're very close. So you ride or die, one of my best hard. friends ride or die, a little bit harder than your best friend. <laughs> Yeah, wouldn't you rather yeah. die though potentially friend. become your best friend though Could in this be. situation? I'm just saying. There's a little bit more to it. In, in, I, I, I know, I know. From the Bronx, you already know. Stop it. I know, I know, Come I know. What you, I know, I know, I know where Ted's going. I know where Ted's going. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying though. Like, all right, I, I get it. You know, what I mean, I'm. I'm in a situation. You know, what I mean, uh I'm falling. I, I. I can't get up. I need. You know, what I mean, I need an upliftment. <laughs> Here you go. Right. And yeah, right. I got that. All right. Thank you. You know what I mean? But it's not just like, you know what I mean? Compared to your best friend, you know, we could talk, we could do this, we could do it's a good there's a question. Slight, there's a slight difference between the two. Now I'm, I'm thinking about it. There is a slight difference between the two. I don't know what it is. But they'll just... potentially eventually become that same person. Yeah. That's what if I you put the time in. Yeah. If the, if the time is put in. They'll eventually become the same person, but I get my what you're ride saying. or die. My my best friends are my ride or die. I don't have with no expiration. There's no date. separation. There's no expiration. I don't know what that was about, Brian. There's no expiration. <laughs> <laughs> to me, a ride or die. Yeah, next week it's over. You're no longer. My <laughs> <laughs> no, we it's had expired. Enough. It's been 30 years. It's to me, a ride or die, you could be stuck on the side of the road at 2 o'clock in the morning, and they'll be there. They'll be friend, there, yeah. My right. best friend will be like, right. oh, I hate that for you. Like, <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, oh, that's not your best friend. <laughs> nah, sometimes your best friend could, come, could pop up out of nowhere, you know what I mean? 
feel like we have to have individual therapy sessions. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm, I'm starting to feel like these men have had some really bad relationships, friends oh. and and partner wise. Yes. 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 Tony agrees. Yes. Yeah, Carmen. So what's going first? on with your friends and you're like, what in the yeah, hell? Right. I don't really understand that. Okay, so Carmen could call me from freaking Thailand at 2 a.m. and I'd be on a plane trying to right. figure out how right. to help her. Yeah, yes, that's right. Yes, I'm, so I'm like, no, you know, like without even thinking, like, should I do this or not? It would just be right. automatic. So I so. Andrea, I mean this. Andrea, but go ahead. She heard you. <laughs> <laughs> Before like, the end of this, I'm going to get it, gonna gonna get it right. Okay. <laughs> and I, I can't butcher Cynthia. Okay. <laughs> so I have a couple of, uh, I have a best friend. We've been friends for 40 plus years. Mm -hmm. We don't have to talk every day. Right. We can get on the phone and just pick up from whenever. Yeah. That to me is a definition of, a best friend. If you're in, you know, if you're in need or the the example that was just given. Now your ride or die is like, hey, I need an enema. Who you're, you know, you're in a situation and you're like, okay, I'm going to look for, you know, my significant other or my partner or whatever like that. But that person doesn't need to meet that best friend. But because would your best friend not do that for you? I mean, that's a little too much information, but that's what I was going to say. That's a crazy example. That is the best, that's best, best, best friend. Crazy example right there. <laughs> that's wild, crazy. Real, real life example. I had right. surgery, and my best friend Andrea helped me take a shower. No problem. Wasn't even a yeah. question because I could not do it myself. Right. And did it for a week, helping me and making sure that I had everything I needed. That's the best friend. And you know what? Any one of my best friends would have done that. I, was, yeah, like, I, do. I don't have any friends who I wouldn't, if I had to, call and be like, dude, I need an enema. I need your help. Right. All of my friends would come and help me if I needed them. would be them. there for you. Okay. Okay. Ted, I just yeah. want you to know now, enema, Ted. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, like, oh, I, I wanted to go, go to an extreme. I wanted to go to a, a, a full extreme to see, like, okay, here's the here's the difference. That'd be crazy, you know. It would be. It's like, I mean, knock on wood, I never have to make that call, but I got people. I'm with Nancy. I got people. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Yeah, I'd been like a bloodshed squeezing. Yeah, but an enema. Yeah, but is it is it because it's another male? Is is it that because I mean you got. Andrea and Carmen would do it for each other, no questions asked. But is it because right. your ride or die or your best friend's another male? You mean to tell me you wouldn't do it? Nah. Nah, if my friend really needs it, you're going for it. <laughs> you gotta go get it. You gotta go get it. Cynthia, you know how it got really quiet. Once right. Like, oh, man, like, hmm. my buddy gotta get it. Are you guys any ride or die? Because don't so feel like it. <laughs> Tony doesn't know what to say. I'll, I'll get it. I'll get it. But if you're gonna tell me like, "Yo, we gotta go with the procedure," then I'm like, "Hey, man, you're on your own, buddy." That's what I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> keep, keep, be, be real with it. I'm telling you that y'all be on your own. But I'll buy for you. I'll go get it if you need it. But maybe everyone's definitions are a little bit different as to what okay. you know, spouses and friendships. I think in the perfect world for me <laughs> and the world that I live in. My best friend and my ride or die are pretty much exactly the same person. Yeah, that's the reason why I'm single is because I don't want anything less than that in the in in the man that's going to spend his life with me. Do you know what I mean? Like I I, I have a standard that I, I really want that. And, and Brian, I think you should I'm think that way too. The comments. What what happened? <laughs> no, the I think Brian should think that way too. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, but 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 here's the thing. My standards are reasonable. Carmen's standards, not even the best Olympic pole vaulter can hit that bar. Wow. You need a jetpack. For Carmen's Damn. standards, you need a jetpack. If not a jetpack, you need a plane. Damn. If not a plane, you get a damn shuttle. I don't, what is he doing? Like, I don't understand. Yes, you're absolutely right. The standard is way high. I don't even, um, you don't need to. Wait, 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 wait. What, what? reasonable. Hold on, hold on. 
Pardon, pardon. What exactly <laughs> is the standard? Where's the sage? Are you being running sage? For you or in general. That's her standard. Because the way Brian says it is like, it's unreachable. What's happening here? God bless that woman. Yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> what happened? God bless that we woman. We have to shout out the comments, you guys. <laughs> 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 the comments are going crazy. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. I just got lost somehow. <laughs> you know, someone who would never fart in front of her husband. God bless that woman. See, this is all the enema stuff, man. See, when you bring <laughs> toilet stuff into the stream, this is what take it, take, just take it easy on the fiber, y'all. Yeah, me, um, yeah. Talks and parsley. Easy on the bread. So, you, so Brian, I, I'm going to answer the question because he asked me a question. You want to know what the standard is for me, or are you trying to figure out what the standard is for all women and why you're having maybe difficulties finding women who all want the above. You for your money? All the above. Ooh. I got time. <laughs> Here we go. Run open Pandora's box. Here we go. <laughs> what am I missing? Is this really hard? I didn't knock the door. I didn't knock on the door. I kicked no. that door. Let's go. <laughs> no, I, I asked. I- I asked what was Carmen's standards because of the way Brian's over exaggerating them. Yeah. That's what I asked. <laughs> I don't know. Because, That's what I because, asked. Because Tony, because Mr. It's time to go get our beers. Tony and Brian always call me bougie. <laughs> they say I'm so bougie because let me give you the example why. Again. Because okay. one time they were thinking about coming to California and mm-hmm. I said, I'll be happy to suggest some hotels. And some places you could stay. I live in Santa Monica, California, on the beach. Okay, Santa Monica. So nice. <laughs> so I suggested hotels that Andrea, Aunt Cynthia, has stayed at, and Andrea lives here as well. We okay. the normal hotel here would easily be one night, like what five hundred, five hundred fifty dollars a night. And we lost it. And they lost when it, and they have not it. let go of the whole bougie concept since. Can then. I can I just say when I went to Santa Monica to visit Carmen, she hated the hotel I was in. Oh my god! Oh, because it was literally across the street from the pier. Maybe we ask which hotel it was, please. But it was only was it, like I think two hundred a night. Star? Which hotel? Cynthia, was it five star? It was no, four it stars. Was, no, because they oh, were. That's the reason why. It was only four stars. The thing, and it was also across from the pier. Did you hear yeah. that part? Yes. And Cynthia, what else was broken? You didn't have a pool. Did right. They were re- they were renovating the pool, so we didn't have a pool. And I had to go pick you up and like go around the world, even though you're 10 minutes from me. I had to yeah. go around the world to go pick you up because it okay. is like the, the crowd. Anyway, if you're going to ask me, where you want to stay in Santa Monica, or you ask Andrea, or you ask anyone, you want to stay in Santa Monica at the beach, I'm going to tell you where you should stay because these are beautiful hotels here. But, and again, it's not even Santa Monica. I don't, like, when I go to New York, I stay in Soho. I stay in Tribeca. That is the luxury, my people, of not having children. Okay, that's the other part that you don't seem to understand. I don't have to spend my money or worry about taking care of kids or whatever. So I can do things like fly first class or those are choices I make. Thank you. you Nick. Thank you. <laughs> you have the option to pamper yourself as you just yeah, said. Yeah. I'm just saying. And that's not a, that's not a crime. Thank that's you. not a crime. It's not a crime. Be, uh, if that's uh, how you want to do things, it's not a crime. Call, call, call by the the checkout is at 11 o'clock. I want to right send her and say that she has lived a life and she has earned, she deserves to uh-huh. get what she wants and to uh-huh. be bougie and all of those things. Uh-huh. And so whatever her standards are, uh-huh. like, yeah, someone should meet those standards. And if they don't, guess what? She's fine without them. Yes, she it's is. okay. Yes, and I'm is. not taking money out of your pocket, Brian. Right? I you I'm to. not asking you to pay for my hotel. Okay. He's going to give it. Okay. He's going to give it. <laughs> I respect that. I respect that. Okay. Right. And, and look, okay. It, just to back up for a minute, and, and Andrea, thank you for saying that. You know, there there was a lot of guilt for a long time because I did grow up on the streets. Literally, that is not like me just saying it. I grew up without parents. I already I already did the time. I mean, I hope like if 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 God makes me have to go through something else, I will go through it. But yeah, that's also part of it. Part of it is if I can do something for myself that isn't hurting nobody, is not taking away from my rent or whatever. Yeah. But also, I mean, it's why I choose to live where I live. 
No, because, and I think everybody yeah. should be like that. I think everyone yeah. should be able to to treat themselves once in a while. And if you're gonna travel anywhere, why not travel first class? Why not stay in a five star hotel and treat yourself? We're not saying you gotta do it every day or every time or you know right. what I'm saying like. But once in a while, it's right. first yeah. Class. If you got the yeah. options, if you got the option to do it, yeah, you go ahead and do it. You know? Knock yourself out, yeah. I honestly tell you, that would have been beyond my means with what I have going on myself. That's why we did that. It wasn't so much I that know, you, you know, then you went on Let me tell you something. Even if I had the money, if I spend the $500 on that, I want full room service, and I don't want no questions asked. I'm like, Nancy, I want to go to the toilet. Go ahead and put the bidet on there. I'm like, toilet. That's not $500, though. That's, <laughs> just saying, cause that's a lot. And I mean, $200 a night, that's standard prices right now. She was actually correct for the future because hotel prices are going in that direction depending on what location you go to. Based on what I've been seeing, but we did get on it. We, we, me and Brian kind of roasted. <laughs> we didn't mean to make her feel bad. Yeah, <laughs> it, it wasn't a roast. It was. No, you're talking <laughs> about standards. You know what I mean? You're talking about standards. Like for me, one of the standards is is that a man in my life understands that and gets it. He don't have to provide nothing for me. By the way, when I married my husband, mm-hmm. Andrea and Cynthia, before I say a word, do you guys remember what my husband used to do as a job when I met him? I remember how you met him. Yes, I do. Do you want to share that with them or should I? You can tell them. Well, because they're going to all freak out. They're going to be so <laughs> stunned by my choices. The man that I married towed my car. He was a tow truck driver. That's who he yeah. was. And I had the job I had now and was making even more money. Mm-hmm. That's how I met him. Okay. And was, it his, now, was it his private business? I'm sorry? Was it his private no, business? he was working as a tow truck driver. He was a tow truck driver. Just... Okay. All right. So he turned around and now he has, I, you know, uh, he's going to be like, that's right, talk about me like this. <laughs> <laughs> but now he has his own motocross oh, company. Probably. You know, he has his own motocross company. He's extremely successful. He does really well. So when you're talking about standards, what am I looking for in a person? Somebody who is, and these are all the things that Andrea and Cynthia both know who he is, and they know the men I've dated, kindness, ambition. You know, I mean, of course you have to be attracted. So we're not talking about physicalities here, right? You need to be attracted to them. Yeah, I understand that. But yeah. Somebody who can teach me something. Somebody who understands my travels in my life and how things worked out for me and is okay with yeah. that. Yeah. But doesn't push me down, lifts me up, you know? And why didn't yeah. it work out between us? Because culturally, I was the one bringing in so much money. And yeah, money is an issue, especially when you're very, very, what's the word? I don't want to say macho or whatever, but you come from a culture that's very masculine. You know, Latinos are very, like, I have to be a charge. And I think we just had yeah. a, a, a moment where it was like, this is not going to work out. And, and we made that decision together and it was amicable. And luckily for us, we didn't have children. You know what I mean? Like, I think that was a good thing. So we've stayed friends. And then his new wife and I are best friends. And Asked me to be the godmother to their child, who is now fifteen. You so two, you two are a classic example wait. of friends who remain friends regardless. I am probably friends. People, I am friends with most of my exes, most of them. A lot of people can't say that. That's a good thing, in my opinion, because a lot of people. But it's a good thing that you can't stay connected to your friend to I your. Need to be the godmother? Hell no! A lot of women wouldn't even deal with that these days. The ones that I see. I'm actually, I'm actually good friends with my yeah. husband's kid's mother. Yeah. It's good with friends, the baby yeah. mama. <laughs> Sometimes they work it out and they'll be amicable with everything. Yeah. The godmother and you all are that close to that type. That's a plus. That's a positive aspect. Mm-hmm. So, so wait, Carmen, just, just a question. He had the problem that you were bringing home the bacon or you no, had the problem? No, I think it was both. And I think it was just, it, it became too hard on, I mean, I don't think that's what he would say. You know what I mean? Like, okay. I think for him, there's a pride thing in that. Um, but I do think money is, is uh, Fireman Rich is saying money is no issue in my, my marriage. I won't have a pot to tinkle in if it wasn't for the right. missus. <laughs> right. Um, I also had a very, I'll, I'll be honest, I also had a very high pressure job. That's when I was working a corporate job. I was flying back and forth to New York. I had four assistants, two in LA, two in New York. It was, I was working all the time. So I think there was also this kind of. A distance. 
a bit of a separation. It's not about distance. I was also just in a, I was in a, I was going to parties. I was going to, you know what I mean? There was a lot happening that for him was like, it's out of my league. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, and again, I'm not. Different levels of life. Yes, it was, was just different, different, different yeah. things happening. And so, and, and now when I see him and I see how successful he is and how happy he's, Here's the difference. He is happy doing what he loves, and I still do the job I don't love, right? Like, it's a, weird, right? It's not really about money. It's like he wanted to build yeah. a business doing motocross and all that sportsy stuff that you guys know more about than I do. Yeah. And, you know, for a while there, he was fixing, like, the CHP's motorcycles, the BM, you know what I mean? Like, that was, like, a big contract for him, and I don't mm-hmm. I'm talking about it this yeah, much. Like, <laughs> Yeah, so watching someone yeah. succeed that way is awesome. And I he, here's yeah. what I would suggest in the future for all of you who are divorced or thinking about being in relationships. When you tell people, because I think this is the real problem, when you tell people you love them, you need to understand what love really is. Because to me, yeah. that's the problem. I I love people fiercely, and it's really hard for them to get out of my life. So I don't use that word so loosely. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So if I love you, that means a really big deal to me. That is the right or die. That is the best friend. That is the, there is nothing you can do that will, I mean, I used to say to Mia all the time, my other best friend, I would say to her all the time, I don't care if you murdered somebody. If you tell me, oh my God, I I, I did do it, but I, I, I it was this one. I'm, I'm going to defend you. I'm going to figure that shit out. I'm going to do what I got to do because I love you so much. I'm going to understand. I'm going to do what we have to do to try to help you walk through that. Because right. there's nothing she could do that would make me not understand her because I love her that much. I understand that. She would never murder anybody, by the way. I'm just, you know. <laughs> Case just comes back and keeps me in the ass. They're going to be like, two years yeah. ago you said. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm to shovel. Yeah. Hmm. Is it is it realistic that if the Carmen, I'm not using you as an example, I'm just using the fact that you were making so much money, so much more than your partner. What, is it realistic? Like, could he still consider himself head of household when there's like that type of financial gap between the two of you? What do you mean on our taxes or what are we talking about? No, just in general. Meaning head of the household, like, you know, you guys are together, but he oversees you know, the I, household. I, I, I think, again, going back to something Andrea said, those are really archaic terminologies. And I think it's kind of what's the problem with why people get into relationships and then end them. Because there are these roles that everybody wants to fit into or force their partner to fit into. And, you know, like, who cares who's the head of the household? Can we pay our bills? Can we get what we need to get? I don't think we ever had that conversation. You know, I think for him, issue, you had a good relationship. If you never had that issue, you had a good relationship. Cynthia, yeah. what, what's your take on that? I, I think, think that, um, like Karma was saying, you know, it's it kind of sucks because as a culture, we were brought up that way that the man is the one who, you know, maintains the house while the woman takes care of the children and the household while the man works. But I think in this generation, all that's kind of changed and you know, a lot of people are di- thinking differently now. And a lot of the women are the ones that are working while men stay at home. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times with culture, it's, it's very hard for men, especially to to kind of change that in their whole mindset. Like, oh, you know, they it's almost like um, their masculinity is kind of taken away. Yeah. You know, and they think they're being talked about by other people because they so-called are now wearing the skirts and not the pants. Mm-hmm. things like that but I think it's you know it's stuff that we grew up with from our parents and grandparents who taught us that you know all right Andrea what's your take I just have a almost like visceral reaction to the term head of household like I can't like wh- why would anyone think they need to be the head of the household me or my husband mm-hmm. or one of my kids or whatever like you are a family in partnership together with everybody. Everybody's the head of the household. Nobody's the head of the household. Everybody's got to pull their weight. Everyone's got to, you know, be able to give everybody else some grace every now and then. I, like that, it just doesn't even register with me. And I just have a very like 
I just reject it and push it back. Like, no, get away from me with those kind of terms. I don't, I don't accept that. Gentlemen, traditionally, that's where everybody gets it from. That's what that's what we're taught. So when they're saying it's traditional and it's archaic, they're correct. And we call your taxes. Men are not seen as men unless you are the head of household, you are the breadwinner. You make sure everything external. She makes sure of everything internal. When the roles are reversed in any aspect, that's when people start looking at it crazy. And today's society, there are a lot of more stay-at-home dads. Both mm-hmm. sides need to realize at any given point, if you lose your significant other spouse and you had to take care of the kids by yourself, you got to take on both sides. Right. I think so I need to learn both sides, period. Yeah. You know, some of us, are, some of us who are parents, like me and my ex-wife, mm-hmm. both of us are military. We could have been TDY at any time. We had to take care of both sides of the house which I've done and she's had to do. So I agree with it being traditional and archaic. Like she said, a very good word, by the way. We got to get past it. So I'm glad to hear that there are women out here who don't see that as an issue. That is a definite plus because there are still some women who do want it to be the issue. You have to do this. You you ain't a man if you don't do this. You ain't a man if you don't do that. I don't hear dudes telling women, you're not a woman if you don't do this. You're not a woman if you don't do that. Facts. I don't hear that. You hear a lot of women talking about you ain't a man if you ain't this or you ain't no real man. I don't tell women you're not a real woman. Yeah, but 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 there's the other part of it too where there's this idea that women can do it all. And that's another lie, you know, where there's a whole other pressure. Like as much as we want equality, you know, it's like, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of my friends are not only head of household, they take care of the kids, you know, they have their career women, they have to be great in bed, they got to take care of their husband. And that's this again, it's about, changing the dynamics and the definitions <clears throat> of whatever your friendship and relationship is, you know, okay, whatever guys, your personal yeah. relationship is with your significant other mm-hmm. needs to be a real authentic conversation. Like, what does this mean to us if we choose to get together married or not, by the way, marriage is just a license. I'm talking about mm-hmm. people who make a decision to live together and, and live life together. The yeah. aspect. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Both sides have to realize both sides can be in control at any time. Both sides can be the underdog, if you will. The, the not head household. Head household is really a, t- it's a term. It's a tax it's term. That's why when we said it, I was like, you mean tax-wise? <laughs> if you go to a counseling session, I had a counselor tell me and a girlfriend that I had one time, head of household is the one who makes the most money. And I was like, it's yep. a tax term. Yes, that's true, because yeah. they want to know who the person send the bill to, basically. <laughs> but, yeah, but women are just as equal to run things as men are these days. So both sides are just going to have to face it. Either one of you can be in charge. But but also, yeah. but also, too, there, uh, also too, there's a lot of compromise, or there has to be a compromise, but not many people are willing to do that. Yeah. I mean, you have, mo- like, statistically now, most men are dropping out of college because they've been, they found out they've been lied to. Like, oh, if you go to college, you'll get over a hundred thousand dollars a year. But then now most guys now are dropping out of college, picking up a trade because they're like, a, I'm not in debt mm-hmm. Two, I can learn. I can learn a skill and get paid very well and live comfortably off of that. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and for, uh, for like now, most women, women dominate the college because most women are now in college because they're going with the whole like, yeah, I graduate. I'm I'm like making over ninety thousand a year or whatever, whatever their type of degree, degree is. But that that's where now it's like again the competition. It should not be a competition. You should just have an understanding and a balance. And some of those women who make those high figure incomes are looking for men that make more money than them still. So you guys think that making yeah. ninety or a hundred? I'm just asking a question. Ninety or a hundred thousand dollars? You think that's a lot of money? Mm-mm. It is to me. It is to me. I'm just asking because I just want you to know it really is not. Especially no, it's, it depends it, it, on where you it, live. It, it depends, depends on where you live. live. Yeah, it depends on where you live. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay, because like, like I dated a nurse. She was making about a good fifty-five to sixty thousand a year. Mm-hmm. I was an ER technician making about forty to forty-five. Mm-hmm. But apparently, yeah. just because she's a nurse, I'm an ER tech. Even though, like, I do more grunt work than she does, but yet. Everybody's like, oh, you should be with a doctor. You should be with this versus like, mm-hmm. I'm sitting there going like, yo, you knew what you were getting yourself into when you get with me. Now you're like listening to them because you don't want to piss. Yeah, but them sweetie, off. there's so much that you just said that needs to be, she is not the right person for you. I don't even know the bitch. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, anybody who's going to be that petty. I'm, you're missing the point I'm saying. No, no, I'm not. You're missing the point. Sweetie, anybody who is going to be. Jesus. There is a good man 
who works hard, who is somebody I'm attracted to, who I like. And instead, I'm going to be like, let me listen to my friends and, and find a doctor. She don't just, you don't, you don't need that in your life, Brian. That's what I'm nah, man. I say 90,000 is still a lot because I remember back when I used to make less than $50,000 a year. I know the life and how comfortable I was, but some of the women who have those high standards, they have those high ambitions, high, high dreams that we can't afford and they won't deal with us. Mm. Yeah. That's where it comes from. So I'm at a point now where I can honestly say I'm close to making that income. I still do consider it a lot of money because I remember what I used to do with less. I okay, can do- Tony, I but would you date a woman who said to you, you know what? I would love to date you, but I need you to make more money. Would you like then this by women who told me that because they think I make more money than what I make. See, and if I was in the room with you, I would have been like, bitch, you don't deserve him. Right. I mean, I'm just saying like these are not Mm -hmm. these are not your people. Those are gold diggers. I know. Yeah. Well, there's women not living in the city. If they want somebody who's either <laughs> making the same amount of money as them or more. They do want that. They they still I'm, want look it. I'm, look it. I'm not going to lie to you. To me, it would be great. It would be icing on the cake if I could meet somebody who was also financially successful or financially happy or whatever. Like, would it? I mean, wouldn't you want to meet somebody who is all set with their stuffage so that you don't have to also be worried about their credit rating, their I whatever? Damn, right? okay. So, so that's, that's, not, okay, so that's <laughs> not an exceptional thing. We all would rather be with somebody yeah. who is set, right? Well, you want somebody who's comfortable with and give you have. less headache. Somebody who wants to do yeah. as much as you do. You want to have somebody who's comfortable with what they have, but you want somebody who wants to do as much as you do. And that's what a lot of right. people are looking for in today's society. Yeah, that's not a standard. That's like my wish. I'm like, if he got everything else and he's a tow truck driver, I'm in. Yeah. But he, but if he has everything else and, you know, he's a famous football player or whatever it is, I'm, I'm not going to be like, you know what? I right. wish you were struggling a little bit. No, I don't <laughs> it would have worked out, but nah. I don't wish, I don't wish <laughs> nobody to struggle no more. I don't wish nobody to struggle. No, nah, man. Good conversation, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, if you're not a team, it's the minute you stop being a team, you're already headed for disaster. It's Nancy, you are. It's, <laughs> it's not. Oh, man. What? Yeah, you're I was right, waiting Rick. for that. I was waiting. You're for right, that. Rick. You're right, Rick. You're right. Like yeah. if if it's like if you're pitted against each other, you're not a team <clears throat> anymore. It's a team. No. You guys are working together towards being happy together. Like you got yeah, to be considered the whole thing as a team. Well, if let me jump on your team. Here. I want to jump go, yeah. I apologize. We've been, you haven't really had much to say or you haven't had a chance to get in here, but I like what you said. If you're not a team, but you also said working together. I think if you want to be with somebody and you find somebody comfortable enough, a lot of us want to find somebody we don't have to work with or work at being with them. We just want to be naturally comfortable off the rip. Without putting in any work. Yeah, there shouldn't be any work. If you're happy already, people, sometimes you'll meet somebody, it'll just flow. You want the flow over the job. A lot of people today, they just want to meet somebody. Everything's going to go the way it's supposed to. You shouldn't have to put any boundaries. You shouldn't have to put any standards. This should already be established and understood in the first damn place. Everybody knows what you want in a relationship. Don't cheat on me. Don't get me broke. Make sure I can trust you. That's it. Everything else you're doing to me. Get me broke. Yeah. (laughs) Don't get me broke. Carmen. Yeah. Would you be willing to move on a moment's notice if your partner got the dream job of their life? Would you be willing to pick up? The, the answer is yes, because okay. I can roll, I can work remotely. Yes. But where are we moving to? Wyoming. <laughs> oh, Lord. So my perfect <laughs> man <laughs> would not put me in a position where I would be around racist. <laughs> Why Wyoming? <laughs> Why? Like, What's I wouldn't. That? Like, he, who would? Because it can't be hold nowhere. On, hold on. It's good. It's hold good. Listen. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, why? What's going Ted, on? Ted, your randomness tonight has been insane. <laughs> Off the chain Mom, ridiculousness. Go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. Mr. Bates, thank you. But here's the thing. I don't think I would ever be with somebody who loved me, who we have a partnership with, who would say... Let's move to a place where I know you're going to be really uncomfortable. There's a lot of racism and we're going to deal with a whole other batch of crap. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that would be a dream job. I don't. But before you even finished, I said, yes. But but, but yes, that's true. It's their dream job. It's, It's the job they've been waiting for 
their entire life, mm. would you move at a moment? Is notice? he black or is he white? <laughs> <laughs> All of this matters. I would. I, I'm telling you, I would. <laughs> you would. I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Not that was crazy. <laughs> Here's why. We would not. If, if he what? Was black, <laughs> Brian just walked away. Hear me out. No, nah, hold on. No. Nah. <laughs> okay, hear me out. Carmen's got a point. Let her say it. Go I'm ahead, like, Carmen. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hear me out. I don't think it's illogical. If, if we're going to do like the, trying to theorize, if that's the right word, theorize a scenario, it needs to be realistic. If I'm dating a black man or a Latino man, his perfect job isn't going to be in Wyoming. Might. You know what I mean? No, I, I, I don't see that because well, racism I mean, matters. Black man that Carmen would date. What? I said, what? not a black man that Carmen would date. Yeah, That's thank, thank you. You just stopped me. Yeah. Thank you. But if he has <laughs> the perfect yeah, job too. and does that, you're no longer going to have the perfect marriage because she's going to be miserable. So exactly. why would you want to we're going to be in trouble with stuff. I, mean, I, I don't like. I'm a fine. I will move anywhere for someone I love. Okay. I'll, I'll put it this way: if one of my best friends needed me and they were like Carmen, I'm in trouble. I would move. They know that. Andrea knows that. Mia knows that. It's not a question. So why would I do anything less for the man I'm involved in? But the re you said Wyoming. I don't see a right. scenario where me and my significant other would be living in Wyoming, Kentucky, Arkansas. I can go down the list of all the states. <laughs> me and my significant other would probably not. Okay, I'll tell you a secret. It's not even a secret. I dated a guy. We were dating. He was a triathlete. We were dating for, I don't know. It was like, I don't know, a year, maybe six months. And we were at the beach. You know, we, we had just done this huge workout or whatever. And we were having these conversations. He's like, I could see us having kids. And I was like, oh, okay. He's getting really serious. You know, he's like, I could see us moving. And he's like, I got names for our kids. He named our kids, which was a little bit weird because it was two boys and a girl. And I was like, okay, mm, I'm in, specific. I'm in. And then he's like, and we could live in Montana. I was done. We were done. The relationship. I was like, survey says, eh. <laughs> I'm not moving to what? Montana. I'm not moving and, to Montana. And, like, and I guess he was also head of household. Tony, <laughs> <laughs> Tony, what's your what's what's your answer to the question? Oh, no, man. No. Partner, no. significant other, dream job, Kentucky. Bathurst, would you move? <laughs> Um, depends on what South country. Dakota. No. Oh, okay. Matter of fact, that option actually came up when I was married. Um, we had to. She was looking at moving to Texas, and I'm not going to Texas. She said, "Why not?" I said, first of all, it's too damn hot, and yeah. I've been to Texas. I don't have a problem with the state, but I only know two major cities where you can have fun. I don't know much about down there. I have friends from there. I'm not going down there. She was like, "Where would you go?" I told her where I would go. San Antonio. To go. No, I wasn't going to go to San Antonio. Um, I actually wanted to move to Maryland. I wanted to go to the D.C. area. Yeah, D.C. I moved for to D.C. Account, for the careers that we had because both of us were retired military and civil service. We could have went up there six figures apiece, no problem. Right. I looked at, I looked at the options for the both of us, not just her, mm -hmm. which may have seemed somewhat of an aspect of selfish. But when we actually did go up there one time to go visit my mother and my sister, I took her to the places that I was telling her I would move to. I said, I can go here. I would go here. Your job would be right here. We could telework. And I have to worry about nothing. And everything we needed was in this area. We wouldn't have to deal with any traffic. I showed her my whole plan if we was to go in that direction. You have these options. And when you brought up Wyoming and Carmen, I do want to say this. If he would have had a chance to go there, he probably would have had an entrepreneurial aspect or an op entrepreneurial opportunity. Have you been to Wyoming? I don't think you've been. I've been to every state in the country. I've have never you... been to Wyoming, no. Okay, I have been to Wyoming. I got you. I got you. But have you I ever been to Wyoming? Go ahead. I'm just saying, if he, had a chance, if he had a chance to be a groundbreaker or a trailblazer in a new area, would you still turn it down? <laughs> I, know what? I'm gonna stop nose. I wanted to come out your nose. Ooh. Oh. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Andrea. Can you uh, hi Michael Bathurst? No, 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 no. Andrea, can <laughs> you? Because I don't know why Tony just said no. I would, Mike. I, I would somebody. Bathurst. I would. Tony, Tony said no. Yeah, I would Bathurst. No backlash. Tony said no. I Rick. say yes with qualifications, and I get backlash. No, Andrea, would you please yeah. explain in a different way 
Well, Carmen, I, it's I your show. Know. You're going to get back. You said it's your show. No, it's okay. But I, I want Andrea <laughs> to see if Andrea can maybe explain it in a different way. Oh, we're going to get to Andrea. Well, I'm for I had to look down. I wrote, I, it, I wrote it out. And, uh, uh, I think Tony yeah. gets it. I think he's just, think. you know. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Thank, Thank you. Being too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Got you. Thank you. All right, I'm done. Go ahead. We you know why you're not going to Wyoming. Mm -hmm. And I have also been to Wyoming and... Carmen's not going to Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> Nor am I. When you ask me that question, don't ask me about Wyoming. I will say this though: I have had a couple of friends who were out there. I've never heard anything bad about Wyoming. I've never. Had, I've had a couple of friends who was out there military. Because nobody were, wants to live over there. Um, Tony, Wyoming is beautiful to visit. Yeah, right, right, visit. right, water rafting or whatever. That's not what I'm talking about. This country is a beautiful country. Living in red states is not something I choose. Yeah, to I don't want know to be part of. That's what I'm talking about. I don't want to be in a red state. It's as simple as that. Gotcha. Cynthia, <laughs> you've been married um, you, coming up on 25 years? It'll be 26 coming up. It'll be 26. Your significant other says South Dakota, dream job. What's your take? No. <laughs> Weird. No meaning it's a showstopper or no meaning, let me hear you out. I would say probably he could go for a few months, see if he likes the job. He really loves it while I stay here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to be alone. Yeah, right. <laughs> Enjoy the cat. But if I had to go right away, it'd be a no. <laughs> Brian? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> is that an affirmative no. answer i would move to um, would move to london england yes no nobody said Ken's london I, you know, on the back I said, hey, michael back michael's back in her. london but that's not the question arkansas arkansas sure on a moment's notice it's a red state yeah. it's brian red state of well because okay, well wait. because a taxes are lower b there's opportunity out there wait. c it's like right Wait. in the middle of everybody else I know. Time out. Ryan, would you move to San Francisco? <laughs> yes, I would, but not LA. <laughs> I'd be like, look at Full House, y'all. <laughs> it's just like that. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, what's your take? What's my take? Are you picking up? Are you picking up and moving? Across the country to somewhere where you haven't been because your significant other is saying, Hey, it's the opportunity of a lifetime. It depends on the place, man. But for the most part, yeah, it depends on it depends on the situation. If it's like a, the, the dream job that they really want, and but it really depends on the place where it's at. Oh where it's at. my god, I get slammed, but it's every, like, okay. I'm just saying, San Francisco. San Francisco I say the truth fine. straight up. I'm saying San Francisco okay, fine, but taxes will kick my ass. <laughs> I like paying no taxes over here. Rick, what's your take? You're moving. Hypothetical situation. Does the dream job mean I don't have to work anymore? <laughs> Ooh, see, that's a good negotiating. Because mm, if contract. I don't have to work anymore, I'm I'm good in most places except in the North Pole or on the equator. I don't like those extremes. Temperature. <laughs> uh, otherwise, I'm good pretty much anywhere. If I don't have to work, I'll I'll figure it out. If I don't have to work, we you didn't put that in the equation. I'll become a talk. YouTuber or something. Oh, I don't know. You said dream job. That don't mean lots of money. <clears throat> then it's not a dream. I'll, I'll just say this: twenty. One years ago, I got the dream job. My wife moved, no questions asked, and it was rough as can be down there. Where did you move? Uh, Tampa, Florida. It was rough. Wow. Mm. wow. It was rough as can be wow. down there. Hurricanes. See, that's why I and said I'd send him by himself for a few months. You scope it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you scope out the scene. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine right where I'm at. <laughs> depending on the location, like I said, I know where I want to go. I know places that I would like to live. Even when I came here, I had no desire to live here when I first came here in 2008. It took a couple of years before I realized how comfortable I would be. Where but, are you again? I forget where you are. You're in New York, right? No, I'm in Warner Georgia. Robert. Georgia, right? Yeah, he's in Georgia. Where I'm, at, where I'm at is a base. Where I'm at 
is comfortable for me, my career field, my work history. So I'm stable. You want to go somewhere where you're able to maintain some stability. And you also want to be somewhere that your significant other can be just as comfortable as you are. That is how you have peace in the home, in my aspect. In my aspect. <laughs> plus, I, and plus I, could, I could go fishing and hunting in Arkansas, too. Yeah, we, we said San Francisco for you, honey. We changed it. <laughs> Remember, we changed it so it was a little bit. Yeah, no firearms? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It would be difficult for you to make the choice. So, Ted, um, what happened with I Tampa, make a Florida? Snare. I can make a snare and use a machete. I can, I'll get it. <clears throat> My wife opted. We agreed. She moved back. Oh. And I had to figure out a way through the good Lord to get me back mm-hmm. to New York. Okay. She moved back. Mm-hmm. Not yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At first. That's crazy. I hear a lot of good things. Andrea, about. what about you? I don't know. Uh, where am I going? <laughs> Wisconsin. Well, we didn't want to say Wyoming because you shut Wisconsin. it down. Wisconsin. I'm going to give her. I'm gonna, let me let me give her. Des Moines, name. Iowa. I'm You're going her. to Wisconsin, the land of trees. <laughs> she's she's been to Iowa, Iowa a lot lately because she's working there right now. She's working in. A, is it Iowa, Andrea? Yeah. None of the above. Tennessee. Tennessee. So far, oh no. Absolutely not. Yeah, Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Where's like, Nancy from? She's Where's in Nancy? Wisconsin. Iowa? In Wisconsin. Wisconsin. I love Madison. I used to go to Madison, Wisconsin every year. I was in Milwaukee once. It was lovely, but not moving there. I I will not live anywhere where it is freezing cold ever. Uh, I also will not live in a red state. And uh, I've moved around a lot and wound up coming back because... This is the best place to be. The West Coast is the best coast. <laughs> I thought about moving to New Orleans. But I would move again, but it just depends on where. So I wouldn't go to I any of the places that you are. New Orleans in the um, early 2000s. I looked at New Orleans. I looked at Las Vegas. Oh, New Orleans. I could do that. No, you, I'm not going. No, you can't. You would not survive in New no. Orleans. No. I loved when I was in I New Orleans. Actually, probably would survive down there, was- but New Orleans, New Orleans was, um, I'm glad it's I didn't a, go down there. That's right. It's, it's a different that's beast. Right. East Coast Stay loud, Vegas. Rich. I like Vegas. <laughs> Vegas, I was told Coast, Vegas is old after a while. Actually, yeah, on the wrong 2016, side. I was there for about three weeks. Yeah, Vegas isn't cool after a while. the third week, I was ready to get up out of there. But I like <laughs> Vegas. I like I, I could visit Vegas. I could visit New Orleans. But I don't think I could live there. Not Vegas. That's all I'm going to say. That's Four hours from here. Pretty six hour in Vegas. After that, I... You just got yeah, to get out. After two, after two weeks, that's enough. That's enough. That's You're enough. Done. Although now with the dome concert thing with you two, oh with my Spears. god, I gotta see that. Yeah, that yeah thing I'm, I'm, going go I'm going on the third. I'm going on the third. Are you really? Do you have an extra ticket for me, sweetheart? Sweetheart. Oh, oh so sweetheart. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, 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 yeah. 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 After you blocked I mean, my ass six months I ago. Oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hey, so just a question. What topic is like the most difficult topic that you've had to discuss with your partner? Well, the enema thing never came up. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying, that kind of tops it. Uh, Carmen, you're hitting lead off. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's been a while since I've had a partner on a regular basis. So I'm probably, I should be last. I got to think about it. Okay. Tony? Money and death, Mario. Um, I agree with Mario. Money. I'll I'll make this a majority of relationships that I've had. I have had quite a few relationships. Kids. Whether not to have children or not. Oh, interesting. Oh, I was agreeing because, like, just, uh, I would say differences in how we, you know, want to parent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cynthia? Money. Money money is always a difficult topic. Ryan? How to be better. Self-improvement. Ooh, say more about that, Ryan. What do you mean? Uh, just mainly because like if they're if they're so like living if they're doing one or two things that's kind of like a habitual and they realize it's bad for them, what can they do to like get out of that funk and learn how to be how to be a better and all that? And normally I would just say, yeah, you know, like find a hobby whether it be like painting because there's a lot of workshops that do like painting there's there's an organization called meet up where you can meet up with people that have the same interests like you are if you want to if you're curious about photography there's a group for that you know just finding out like new things to kind of uplift your spirit if you feel like you're pretty much like your life if you're 
like plat you feel like you're on a plateau which most yeah. most people are so it's just uh like we just talked about just find something that, that really that you want to do together or you want to try for yourself if you want to do like a personal growth and those are the you've had the difficult conversations you've had with partners <clears throat> i could probably say off the top of my head one mm-hmm. and the thing was i felt that i would be better doing something that's more suited to my skill and ability versus sitting behind a desk and i don't like and what my last job i sat behind a desk i felt like i was handcuffed and i hated it i yeah. never wanted so much that i wanted to break off the handcuffs say screw it i'm out until finally yeah. when they were trying to come up with some ideas and i just wouldn't agree i'm like nope I, th- this is not suited for me thank you for the opportunity but i'm gonna go somewhere where my talents could be best utilized. I remember that conversation when you had it too. I remember you saying, mm. "Yeah, I, guy, yeah, I never drank so much. I was that, I was like that angry. I was that depressed. I was like, man, I need. It. That's why I went ahead and went back to school, see what I could find, and then I went back to my old bread and butter because it was easy because the bills don't pay themselves. And now, like with the current job that I have, the current job that I have, I'm having fun again. I'm mm. I'm in a leadership role, but I don't have that title. But it doesn't matter because the crew I have, we're a night, we're a tight yet. We're, we are a team. We're a unit, and I'm feels having good. fun again. It feels great. And because, the thing about it is, not being handcuffed to the desk, no emails, no Zoom calls, no all these other stuff. It feels wonderful. Okay. I can just go ahead and just do what I do, and I have fun. And that what? my like my person like. My happiness is more important than money because sometimes the grass ain't greeter on the other side. It's not. I like what Alma said. Having kids and how you will raise them is one of the conventions that should have been had early before you get pregnant. I 100 percent agree. you got to have those conversations. You have got to have those conversations because by the time the kids come, they ain't nothing else to talk about. Take care of the kids and shut up. I want to give that out to a lot of people because I see a lot of people not taking care of their kids. It bothers the hell out of me. It really does. Joe, what's your take on it? It wasn't really difficult. But it was something that kind of bothered a lot of like people I, I dated, a lot of like girls, women I dated. It was the fact that I was overly mellow about things. I don't know if people like notice. I probably some people notice that I was just like cool with certain things, and like they they, they would always ask like, "Oh, I'm you know like they, they get upset that I'm not being jealous or I'm not like." getting mad or uptight about something. I'm like, no, is that what, like, what's the big deal? And, and, and I never understood it. I never understood it. It was always a big problem. And it's like, oh, like, like I dated this one girl. Like, she would say things. We would argue. And she would get into these fights. And I said, oh, okay. All right. She get upset. She tried to pull me. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm like, all right, that's cool. Whatever. <laughs> we on the phone, she would argue. I'd be like, all right, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. And I would do this on like a crazy streak. And my friends used to talk to me about it. Go, yo, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you know you in a relationship, right? And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not sweating it. I'm like, why people want this for like, sure. come on, man. Like, you don't care. Like, like you're not interested in the Yeah, brain. but it's, it's just that I don't want to deal with a lot of that. I'm just like, why are we arguing? Why are we beefing? Just what are we doing here? On. Yeah, what are we doing here? <laughs> and it was just so weird to me, man. And I'm like, why y'all like this? It's just so weird. But it was always something. And... I, do, I, I I did it. My oldest brother, he he used to do that too. And we've got that from our dad. So it was like, <laughs> it's just like, just us being carefree and mellow. That's all it is. It's like, I just don't want to stress it. But it's just been like a topic that I've noticed throughout a lot of my relationships. Yeah. Rick? So too much emotion. We seem vulnerable. We got to take it easy. That's what a lot of fathers will teach you. Take it, take just, just, just think about. Yeah, it. just like calm down. It's fixable. <laughs> Again, I'm there's like good. a misalignment of relationship there. But yeah, I'm a lot like Mr. B. If you're gonna fight, it's gonna be by yourself. Yeah, I mean, it was funny because we rarely fought 
me and my ex. Um, and you would think even like since I'm divorced, maybe at the end. No, we really didn't. I only found out over the phone we were getting divorced just like that. I was like, like I got sucker punched. But if I had to pick one thing, I would say money. Money. Money's always an issue. Mm-hmm. Ted, what about you? Mm. <laughs> you want me to remind you what the question is? No, 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 no. It's real easy. It's, it's um, one thing we, we we differ on is um, parenting, mm. the way you raise the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, there's certain times where we're on opposite. A lot of times, I would say 99.9 percent, we're on the same page. But then there's that time when you're like, eh, I don't agree with that one. Clearly, it's a big deal since your show's called Late Night Parents. Late Night Parents. That's easy. But um, I just want to say, if you are divorced, you're not broken goods. You're not a failure. There is hope. You might find somebody else and be even happier. Or I've even seen people get back together. They're more mature. They figured out life. And they're happy as they could possibly be. So I just want to throw that out there. Or you don't ever have to be married or in a relationship and you're going to be just fine. I'm not. Also, no, no. I'm just saying. Like, we are human beings. We, we need to normalize. Need it's okay to be single and have yeah. fun and have a life too. I think that's the other thing that's changing generationally is mm-hmm. you don't have to have somebody to be of any value. You are valuable as you are. I like that. That's well said, Carmen. That's well said. I like that. That's yeah. Right. Yes. Come on. I really appreciate you. That's Thank right. you. <laughs> I do. Oh, we, are, we, are, we are interactive human beings. We need like constant contact and interaction. On I didn't say don't have contact. And when you say contact, are you talking about sex? Because that is not what I say yet. I knew she was going to go there. I knew it. You give her an inch and she just goes a whole 10 yard, like a mile. Good grief, woman. And plus, define constant because that can be well, I mean, because too. Because we, we, we like interaction. Like, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what's going on? You know, we're, we're like that. We got to have, we got to be a- <laughs> people in general. Maybe some. Of- I'm Ooh. good. I really don't. I mean, I know a lot of people do, but I prefer much more solitary life. As much as I would like concept. companionship, but I know if the country with the shit, I'll be fine on my own because I know I'll survive. I got a question for Andrea. She just said she prefers yeah. solitary life. Do you base that on where you're at now, or have you always been like that? And I say that because I believe you are married, correct? I've always been like that. I was always the kid in my room, listening to music, reading books. She is you know, married. I, mean, I hung out with my friends, she she is. and I yeah. went and played outside and all of those things. But like, I like to have a significant amount of alone time, and being around a lot of people in person or online is very draining for me. Mm. So, yeah, actually, yeah, that because some people walk saying, out, they do seek the solitude. Just, honest, so like. And everything is like Andrea. Are you like on a sleep for like the next two days after this <laughs> encounter? Oh, this name, this text is wow. Wow. really getting no, on my nerves. I mean, this is Carmen ass. Right? I, I'm not saying I don't enjoy it. I'm just saying it takes a lot of my energy, and then I need to go and recharge. You okay. know, by myself. So you got to take some downtime to yourself. A lot of people who yeah. are married. They need downtime to themselves because they don't normally have it. That's why I asked, is it, is it your mind, mentality now based on what you've been through or were you always like that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I was always, and I have, you know, like Carmen said, I'm married. I have kids. I have a full, you know, I have to be interacting with people all the time. So every little second when I can, like, be you by need myself. Some time. Absolutely. You need yeah, some time. time for yourself. Yeah. 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 Yes. I agree with that wholeheartedly. Question, I, you, Andrea, are you a cancer? No. Okay. <laughs> like introverted people are fueled by alone time. Extroverted people are fueled by being around people. It's totally exactly. Introverted. I can tell you myself when um, me and Moy separated and there was nobody in the house, it drove me nuts being alone. Mm-hmm. Because I was used to coming home to seeing everybody. My my mental exactly. peace was coming home to everybody under the same roof. Mm-hmm. So that, that, that took an adjustment for me. That took a big adjustment. Coming home to nobody and nothing and just quiet. I was like, there's somebody else in the room that can connect with you on that level when their husband was away. <laughs> I won't say who it is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't want to out you by any means, but I don't want 
to yeah. feel alone. I, the- I was going to say, I totally agree with them. <laughs> it makes sense because you change your mindset to having a family once you have a family. You want to come home to everybody. You don't want to mm-hmm. necessarily yourself. It helps to come home to yourself a weekend a month. It helps to come home and have 30 minutes to yourself. When you come home and there's nobody there, it's like all this silence and all this space and all this. You don't know what to do with yourself. <laughs> well, that took me months. Boy. When me and my wife separated, it took me about four good months to just get used to like, I didn't even go in the bedroom. I was sleeping on the couch. Mm-hmm. I had to see everything. I don't want to be anywhere just secluded. I just want to be able to, you know what I'm saying, notice everything around me and make sure because I'm used to so much happening. I can go in my room and know what's going on, but if I'm sitting in this quiet, I don't know what's about to happen. It kind of threw my awareness off. That was hard. Carmen, yeah. what's the best relationship advice that you've received? That I've received? <laughs> that you've received. <laughs> wow. Uh, these are questions you should have sent to me in the beginning so I could really have thought it through. <laughs> now, wish you from the hip, woman. You don't know who you're dealing with. Come on, come on wish now. you from the hip. Relationship it's advice wrong. that I've given but I've received. It really didn't work. You don't, watch, you, don't watch, you don't watch his show. We are raw and honest. Shoot from the hip. We shoot from the hip. We do. Um, Marman, I, we, I don't know. We, these are the big we, questions. We, we agreed on the relationship topic, and we're sticking to it. We, we're, we, to we're it. dying to talk about MMA. We're dying to talk about NFL. You have a platform where you can all go do that, <laughs> slap, right? right. Slap, right. Baby. Look at the the only relationship advice that I think I I really remember and that I've taken to heart is don't let a man change who you are authentically, right? And and I think. That has always been something that it's not just a man, but other people. But I remember being told that and sticking to that because a lot of, especially when you're younger and a woman, you're like, oh my God, I love football. I love, no, I don't. I don't love (laughs) football, you know, but we do that, right? Because we're accustomed to want to please, you know, like, oh, I don't care what we eat, whatever you want to do. So I, I think that's probably to this day, part of what I do in any relationship, but definitely with a man, I'm not going to let somebody change who I am authentically. Tony, I'm going to need you to ask me again, honestly. Best relationship advice that you've received. See, it's not easy. You want me to come back to you? It's not, yeah, please. I, okay. I, I, want, I want to be honest with my answer. I don't want to just make something up. I want to be honest. Cynthia? I, I just did. I just made that up off the cuff. Ain't I good? <laughs> yeah, I can't even, I can't even. Cynthia? Honesty. Whether, whether it hurts or not, being honest with each other, I guess. Andrea? Andrea, for the love of Jesus. We've been up there for how long and you still can't <laughs> get it? Come on, man. Andrea, we're going to have you on Late Night Parents. That's a big deal because I've um, never been invited. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big deal, Andrea, so... <laughs> uh best relationship advice I ever got was uh your most important relationship is with yourself. You gotta be right with you before you can be right with anybody else. Friend, ride or die, partner, kids, neighbor, whatever. <clears throat> Ryan. Put in the work, don't be lazy, and help uh help each other get better because you're a team, because everyone achieves more. Together, everyone achieves more. Don't be selfish. Just have that healthy balance. Joe, would you like me to repeat the question, Joe? Have patience. <laughs> have oh. patience. Mm. Rick? Yeah, good one. Learn that one, Carmen. As much as, much as possible. Brian. Wow. Brian. Jesus. Jesus. The flamethrower. Brian. No, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing in the lumber, boy. <laughs> I just, I, I've been nothing but nice. That's all I want to say. Exactly. This is crazy, man. Rick? As much as possible. I mean, it's not going to be 100%. You got to try to be on the same page. And whenever you're not, you got to be already know where you're going to have to compromise um, so that there's no surprises later before you get super deeply serious and especially ended up in marriage. I always say too, like whatever annoys you about somebody before you got married, <laughs> trust me, honey, after you get married, it's going to be magnified 10 times. You ain't never learned about that shit. I'm sorry. If you can't deal with it then, <laughs> forget about it later. It's going to be worse. Mm. Boundaries and foundation. Boundaries and foundation. I got my answer. Tony? Keep God in the center of the relationship. I 100% agree with that. To me, it's also been make sure the two of you work together more than against each other. 
Mm. That's the only way it's going to work. But, but what was the best advice, what, uh, Gabriella? Gabriella was the best advice, yeah. Always, when, especially when you get married, they say put God in the center of the relationship. Absolutely. Mm. Alma said forgiveness. Alma said forgiveness. I like that. Yeah. Um, you open the door for things to happen with that. As much as I understand that, I kind of see a flip side to it. No disrespect to what you're saying, Alma. What, forgiveness? Yes. Oh, Explain. To me, forgiveness is going to have to be there, but it's also meaning you're expecting something to happen wrong. I don't necessarily expect things to happen wrong when I go into a relationship. I want to go 100%. I want to go right. I want to do as much as possible to make sure nothing goes wrong. I kind of have a fantasy mindset of ain't nothing going to go wrong because we're going to fight everything to make sure everything goes right. That might be what's wrong with me. Okay. I think Gabriella said it best. Keep God first. Keep an open mind. Be willing to address your deficiencies. Be willing, willing to embrace where your partner might say, hey, you aren't doing insert whatever. Go into it with, with, with an open mind. Um, with that, I would like to turn this over to our uh, mistress of ceremony, Carmen. <laughs> mistress. <laughs> mistress of ceremony. I'm thinking Elvira. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for allowing us to use the platform tonight. I think it went okay, right? Me and Brian didn't go too bad. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. I would like to extend uh, to each of you the opportunity to come over on our platform, whether together or separate, to, to join us um, to talk non-sports related items. Yeah, I mean, we should wait. Nah, you, you got to put in answer. five minutes of sports, at least. <laughs> at least five, five minutes, minutes of sports. But here's the thing. We <laughs> we'll started, negotiate with three. We started this whole thing to talk about whatever it was we talked about. You oh, started, okay. Okay. Well, like, here's what was helpful. bad. Like, I was mean to you. No, 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 no. You, you helped me this week because... I kind of embrace that the live stream and the podcast and everything is a hobby for me. And you were able to help me finally get a grasp on that, where a lot of folks are specific brands and push their, their platforms a certain way. I just, I just like to do it. I just like to jump on, do it, work on a website, speak with people and talk about, you know, other related issues or discussion topics and stuff like that well so you, you didn't start with what the question was though so people i i just feel like you're not really explaining this very well so i'm looking bad <laughs> i don't want to look bad no you didn't you didn't you gave me straight talk because we were talking about see that's part of my brand that i don't like right <laughs> like, no, no 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 you gave us no really... no you you asked me about linkedin that's what you, you oh oh okay you okay said, okay okay Okay. Carmen, what is your LinkedIn game or whatever? There you go. I said about. you've mastered. Thank you for for bringing it back. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. And I said that, you know, on different platforms, we do different things, but it depends right. on what it is you're looking for. Right. Like, I don't care how many people watch us. Mm -hmm. I care about an overall brand of who I am because I have all of these different things that I'm trying to accomplish with that umbrella. Okay. You know what I mean? So it's I'm I'm not worried about, you know, how many people are watching us every day. I'm more concerned about right. the branding of Carmen Lisset Productions because that's the media wing of my company now. So I'm just right. saying because I mean, Ted, the 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 reason why I'm trying to put it out there correctly mm -hmm. is because I know that a lot of the live streaming thing that we do mm -hmm. goes to one certain segment, right? When we're with this group of people. And I said Respectfully, right. but I don't want it to be like, you know, I called you and was like, let me tell you the oh, straight. No, talk. no, 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 no. I actually called you. It was business. Right, right. I actually called you and it was helpful. It was a helpful um, fruit fashion. So um, cool. that was really that. So I do definitely appreciate you and everyone that's took their time out the two hours or I can't so. We did two hours. <clears throat> two hours. And the parameters were set. Prior to this, Ted, this is two hours. <laughs> two hours. That's max. it. Max. <laughs> well, at this first we were going to do an hour, but that wasn't going to be enough for all. No, time. it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> and thank you for. I was just coming up with these questions, just winging them. I wish you know. Next time we do this <clears throat> next quarter, um, hopefully, <laughs> um, you got to speak, speak it into existence. Okay, but Ted, <laughs> next quarter, though. I'm going to make you look bad. Go ahead. 
I asked you how many times do you want to talk about whatever we're going to talk about? Do you want to get together and talk? And you, you were like, did, you did. I I had had while, while he's on the train, he's on the train. I'm a little bit <laughs> going in a tunnel. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. You did. You did. But, that's but okay. it was it's good. Just, it was good okay. because it wasn't rehearsed. Yeah. It's okay. It's all good. We're on the same page. Yeah. So like, in the, in, you know, next year when we do this again, it'll be next really year. <laughs> next year. Next year's only a few months. That's true. Uh, next yeah. year is actually next quarter. It really is. Yes. Oh, next, quarter. Yeah. Next, year. next year is next quarter. January is next quarter. It wasn't as funny as I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was timed very perfectly. Yes. <laughs> we could all go to California yeah. and do it live. Look, at, we could totally do this again. I think it went well. Mine I almost got a heart attack. Me. She's going to stab me. What are you kidding? Me? Mine almost got a heart attack when you hear California. Hey, California. I'm not, I'm not, like, yeah. like, like, Carmen comes after me. I'm going to have to go MMA on her. You know what I mean? I am totally you know, missing Carl? everything that's happening right now. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> we could well, totally like... do this again. It'll be totally cool. I'm glad that it was fun and fast. And I think I learned a lot about a lot of you. Yeah, it's good. Look at the face. Really cool. Yeah. No, it's in a, a good, good way, way, and maybe not in so in such a, a good way. No, no, in a well, you with the enema. I don't know what that's about. That's <laughs> never going to be my questions were out of bounds, yeah. man. You know what's so interesting? Men are talking about women in such a way that you think we think a certain thing. And what I learned is, you guys want the same thing we want, but I think we all have this idea in our heads that there's something that we all want that isn't actually true. It's yeah. fascinating to me. I'm going to have to go back and listen again. But I think to, what I realized, there's some beautiful men here. To, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of nice. To to piggyback on what you said, there's a saying at my last job that was hanging on the wall. It said, it's not who you are that holds you behind. It's who you think you are that holds mm. you behind. Nice. It's true. All right, with that, I'm going to say good night to everyone. Thank you to everyone in the chat and for stopping by and everyone who's listening and not in the chat because that's an interesting number. And um, we'll see you all again soon, definitely next Thursday, right, Ted? You have your show at 7 Pacific. 7 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. And you have your show at 6 o'clock Pacific time, 9 o'clock Eastern. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thanks for stopping by All About the Joy. Be better and stay beautiful, folks. Have a sweet day.